It's What's 20 by 20, somewhere tiger in that claw? vicinity. With no COC tools, yeah, we don't have COC tools. What quality right. hatchet would you use? Uh, you know, you don't have that many options. You could potentially make, make a hatchet. And this was actually another topic that Adam really passionately wants to talk about. So maybe this is a good segue <laughs> into this. What now, quality tools should we use? What, how, what dictates us being able to get skill actions? Because remember, it's not just what quality hatchet to use. It's not just what, uh, what you're, you're hitting. It's not just what your skill is, but it's almost like a combination of all of these things, plus a few other factors that determines exactly what you should be uh, using in whatever circumstance, in this case, woodcutting. And there's a difference between skill gain and skill chance at getting a gain. And right. by that, I mean, you can do a, a wood chopping action, but what determines whether you're actually going to get a skill up at all for that action? And then after you do get that skill up, what determines how much skill you get? And so those are actually two separate things that Adam should really be talking about because I <laughs> have no idea what I'm talking I mean, I, I've seen so many people asking questions regarding this topic and like you're, you're asking, you're asking the right question. Like what quality hatchet should you use on wood cutting? Um, the, the reality is, is that at low skill, it actually doesn't really matter all that much. Like the scar, the starter skill, uh, the starter hatchet that you get when you create a new character is 30 quality and I feel like you could just use that to yeah, you're going to get skill gains at a regular level. Like it's not going to be bad skill gains. Um, obviously, with no COC, it definitely goes slower. Um, but I think the reality on the new servers is slower is sort of the way to go. <laughs> like it's, it's just the way everybody's going right now until you get some COC uh, circulating, uh, which is slowly but surely getting there. Um, yeah so w i'm gonna start by just taking a really easy example for everybody to understand but but i want you to know that everything that i say in this example applies to every action you do in this game every okay. action every so like oh, like wood every cutting. single action every, wood cutting mining it mining creating cooking. a barrel yeah everything like literally imping everything. imping my tool belt yeah mm -hmm. everything and, and coc farming? is yep farming yeah Ev everything like literally every action okay. anytime you see that action bar going across the same thing's happening every single time uh, and okay. circle of cunning is the is coc is an enchant it's circle of cunning you put it on a tool and it will increase the amount of skill you get uh by a certain percentage depending on the power of the cast um, okay, so the way that the game is built is based on some hidden role that happens behind the scene. Okay, so every action that you do, there is a role that happens. And that role is a number that, I, if I'm not mistaken, is between negative 200 and positive 100. Oh no, Adam, you're gonna have to start all over again. Zek 9's here. How are you doing ah, tonight, Zek? Zek? Nine. What's going on? You just we're we're gonna restart for you because I we're, think you we'll need start, to hear this. Yeah. Yes. Every new player needs to hear this. <laughs> it so I'll, I'll say it one more time, because we basically just started this. Okay, so we're discussing how skilling up works in this game. Okay, so every time that you perform an action, behind the scenes, there's a role a random roll that happens and the roll outcome can happen. I think it's between negative 200 and positive 100. I could be wrong about those numbers. I'm pretty sure about the positive 100 as the upper limit. The lower limit is uncertain. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's somewhere in like the negative big numbers. Okay. Now, 
the outcome of that rule is based on a random distribution that is affected by so many factors. Like there's, there's this massive formula that happens in the background that will determine what are the probabilities of getting any one of those numbers along in, in that range. And the factors that affect it are your skill in in that thing that you're doing at the moment. So if I'm mining, it'll be my mining skill. If I'm woodcutting, it'll be my woodcutting skill. Um, the quality of the tool, the the skill that you have in the tool. So like, you know, like if I'm mining, it's like pickaxe. It'll use my pickaxe skill. Um, what else does goes into there? Uh, I think also the each individual action has an inherent difficulty associated with it. So, for example, it's easier to get a higher roll if you're hitting rock with your pickaxe compared to if you're hitting iron. And it's even harder if you're hitting silver, you know, like there's like a, each type of thing that you're hitting or doing will have a different effect on that outcome of that roll. So let, let me just summarize this for all of you guys that are not following like me. Okay. Um, for anyone like me, I'm pretty sure what you just said was there is a random chance to get between two numbers. Mm -hmm. That's all like RNG mm -hmm. based on a formula that we will never understand that takes mm -hmm. into account all of these factors like our skill level, our quality a tool, our tool quality, uh, what we're hitting, the quality of what we're hitting, all this stuff. Yeah. And um, if we get that number, what happens? Okay, so if that number is below zero... Uh, then what happens is you fail. Um, now, what fail means is different for all the different actions. So uh, for mining, I'll, I'll stick with mining. If you're mining, yeah. a fail yeah. means that the outcome is that you will get a 1.00 oh, quality Daisy. ore. Adam hasn't seen it, but thank you so much for that $5 donation. That's oh, crazy. Thank you so much. I, and and you. you did it during Adam's speech, so either you really love what he's saying, <laughs> or you want him to stop saying it. I'm going to say <laughs> that you really love what he's saying, and I'll let him continue. Yeah. Okay. So if you fail, you get you'll you'll know that you fail with mining because you'll get a 1.00 quality ore out of it. Okay. Now, in the event of a fail, you will 100% chance not get a skill up in mining uh, you might get a skill in you know body strength and other things that are affected by mining but you will definitely not get a mining skill tick if you fail the roll mm. um or any now, skill tick for any no. of the stuff that you're doing like farming you, or uh yeah yeah if you're farming cutting and you're and the action happens and that hidden roll was a fail, then you're not going to get a skill tick. Okay, so just right, establishing so that baseline. Fail yeah, means it, no it. skill tick. Oh, Ivy Song, <laughs> thanks so much for that tier oh, one Ivy sub. Song, thank you for that tier I'm one I'm glad and, and you're by the really, way, really enjoying Adam's math lesson today. <laughs> and Ivy, I, I finished your sickle. I have your sickle, so I don't see you in the game but next time you're in the game i'll pass you that sickle yeah. okay okay now, so so far you said failure no skill so now yeah. we're at the uh so what is not a failure so what is this random above, number one anything above one i think anything above one <laughs> is not a failure yeah I, i'm pretty sure I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not perfectly 100% clear on exactly everything about the system, but I can tell you what I know, and that's um, if it's above 1.01, .01, so like anything above 1.00, um, but below 39.99, so like below 40, essentially, then you will get a skill up. So will, 1 to 40. In like between 100 percent of the time now one thing you have to realize is that if your skill is not 40 yet then when you mine your the ore might not come out at 
40. It might come out at 30, let's say, if your skill's 30. But the roll that was hidden behind the, like, that you don't get to see, the roll might have been 50. But because your skill is capped, the ore quality will only come out at whatever your skill was. But when you're imping something, you're not creating an item of a quality level. Right. How do you know what that number is? That there's still like you, some number that appears? The, you actually don't get to see that number. But it still hidden. happens? It still happens. Totally oh. still happens. And, and, and th that number is what they use to determine whether you fail the imp and damage the item or whether or not you imp the item and how much it gets imped by is also affected by this. So Suto, thank, thanks so much for the follow. Right, so all of that is determined, and all of this determines whether or not you're going to actually get a skill. Now, skilling up in Worm, uh, at least in Worm Online, uh, this does definitely does not apply to Worm Unlimited because there's a different system there. But in Worm Online, in order to get a skill up, you need to succeed, but you can't succeed too much in order to get a skill up. Wait, there's a way to succeed too much? Right, so like... If you got a really, if you got any roll on that first, that hidden roll, that's above a 40, you will not get a skill. Okay. Now, the reason why I use mining as an example is because it's, you can actually see what that roll was based on what the outcome of the ore quality was. But really the only way you can see it is if you're mining on a, or a vein that's a really high quality and your mining skills also really high, like above 40, you have to. Mm -hmm. Oh, Derp right. and Daisy, have a good night. You're going to miss, I mean, you're going to miss Adam's <laughs> wonderful math explanation. Um, but, you know, we forgive you. And something that Adam we've been doing recently <laughs> is we've been clipping out segments of our of our stream now into shorter, like, videos and putting <laughs> so them on YouTube. So if you want this whole math uh, extravaganza, you can just go to YouTube. Yeah, later we'll, at some we'll point anyway later yeah, <laughs> yeah so have a okay, good night so, so yeah really the only way to see this number is if you're mining on with a high like mining skill plus on a high vein a high quality vein um, otherwise all of those things could cap the outcome so if you're only mining on a vein that can give 30 quality or at most uh you might roll a 50 but it'll still come out at 30. Um, and that will not result in a okay. skill gain. But once you get up there, once your skills pass 40 and you're mining on a thing that can give 40 plus ore, you can test this out for yourself. You just mine and you watch the skill ticks. You have to make sure that you're, you have all the skill ticks turned on. Um, it's mm -hmm. in the options to, to see every single skill tick. And you you can verify this for yourself that you will only see a skill tick if the ore came out between one and forty, and and, the, and that's inclusive inclusive. Oh no, that's exclusive. So you so not one point zero zero and not forty point zero zero, but anywhere in between. Hack it. How late do we think we'll be streaming tonight? Uh, probably not. Yeah, another hour. Yeah, probably hour and a half, hour. something like that. Enough for Adam to finish this explanation. <laughs> I know. There's, there's like a lot to go. We don't have to say everything, I think. But um, yeah, there's a lot in this whole bit. Anyway, so just to summarize, okay, if you roll a one or below, no, you failed. If you roll. <laughs> Oh, one. Nine. Thanks for the sub. <laughs> oh, thanks, thanks so much sub, for the sub, <laughs> the prime sub. So, if you roll uh, a, a number greater than one, less than forty, you get skill. You get Anything skill above forty or above, you don't get any skill. Don't get any skill. Yeah, exactly. All right, I solved it. Yeah, the well, end. Right. <laughs> but. See, the real problem happens because in, in skills that you don't see that number for. Right? So let's say you're farming, right? You, you tend to the fields, right? You farm, tend to the fields. When you're tending to the field, you don't get an item. So you don't see what the quality of the outcome of that action was. 
yet the system is still based on the same premise. You, you're doing the farming action and the tending action or whatever, and mm -hmm. there's a hid hidden role that happens behind the scene that determines whether or not you succeeded at it or not, and how well you succeeded at it. Um, so here's, and, here's and, the question. Right, what do I need to do? Farming messages, right? <laughs> what do I do to m optimize that I get a skill? Right. So skill each tick. different skill has a really in-depth method for determining these sorts of things. And I don't want to go oh, through okay. each one of them. Like, I just want a Ray simple Bar answer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ray Barg is hinting at like there's messages that happen and you can determine it based on this and each skill kind of has like its own kind of like weird thing. I kind of want to blanket this whole discussion with one sort of rule of thumb that you can use as a new player for any skill that you're doing. Okay, so I, I think that that might simplify things a little bit more. Okay, and okay. If, if you do get really into a particular skill, there's a lot of learning that you can do to optimize and, and figure out and, and stuff. Um, but, but the rule of thumb is that what you want to do is first find an action that is low difficulty, mm -hmm. right? So for mining, the example would be to use to, to mine rock, like cave walls, like regular cave walls. That's like the lowest difficulty uh, for farming. You want to farm potatoes and wemp and cotton. These are like low difficulty. So what you like, it, whatever you're going to be doing, you look into what are the low difficulty things to do at first. Um, and because these are the things that you're going to succeed at, but because your skills so low, you're not going to succeed so well at them. Right. So that's sort of like the, the range that you want to get into the, the ones that you're, you're going to be able to succeed at, but not, not overly succeed at them. So you want to okay. be, uh, like, uh, like the average person. The average mm -hmm. Joe. Right. Because if you if, Whatever if, the, that means, if the thing is inward. too easy for you, like if you have high quality tools and your skills pretty high and you go and do something that has low difficulty, you're going to just succeed at it with high rolls like every single time, like above 40 every single time. Well, and what's wrong? Like a high level player wants to give me a high quality shovel, let's say. Right. I mean, and my skill or my, my, my action timer is just like goes down and I'm, I'm able to dig so much, but right. what's like, what's the problem? Well, like, I don't see a problem with that. No, there's no problem with that, except for you're not going to get as much skill because you're going to succeed too well at the action, right? If your digging is, you know, maybe 30 or something like that, and you're using like a 70 or 80 quality shovel. And you're just digging like dirt, like regular dirt. Well, that dirt's going to come out at high quality, like maybe your max quality almost every time. You're going to get 30 quality dirt every single time. But the roll that's happening behind the scenes might be 50, 70, 50, 60, 70, whatever like that. But because your skill's 30, it like caps it at 30. But you're not going to get any skill for any of those actions because you're succeeding too well. Okay, so what you want to do mm. in that situation is use a lower quality shovel. Right, you use a lower quality shovel, maybe a 20 quality, 10 quality. Some people even advocate just stick with a one quality shovel or the starter shovel and just let that, you know, damage all the way down to one quality. Because then you're going to succeed, but not so good. You're going to succeed with low rolls every single time. And those rolls, those low rolls are going to give you skill almost every single time. Now, what you're trying to aim for like the best situation that you can get in this game is somewhere in the 50% range. Like 50% of the actions you do give you a skill gain. It, it could be like 55%, like somewhere up in the 50s. If, if half the time you're getting a skill tick in the skill that you're trying to get up, that's like the almost optimal situation. And there's like adjustments like... There's people who like optimize this like insanely. They want to get like 55% or 56% of the actions they do give them a skill tick. But I'd say as long as you're in the 50% range, 50% of the actions you're get doing are giving you a skill tick. 
then you're in like a, a pretty good spot, I'd say. So, so Antirk has a has a uh, has a math question here for you. So okay. he's asking. So um, I'm actually <laughs> going to turn this into a question. So he's saying, so is the so is the reason why he's not getting skills quickly is because he's too, just too damn good at this game. <laughs> yeah. It's that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> no, there you go from the expert. Right, so like a common thing that you're going to see as soon, especially on the new servers, once the casting, you know, once all the priests make all the massive amounts of casted casted tools, is you're going to see tools that are particularly categorized as skiller tools. These will be low quality tools with only circle of cunning on them. Uh, and the reason why these will be good for skilling is because the low quality will make sure that you don't succeed so well. You succeed some of the time, hopefully 50% of the time, but not like well. And the circle of cunning will increase the skill gain by a percentage. Okay, so that's what I want to get. I'm doing, uh, let's say, leatherworking. So I want to get a bunch of low quality leatherworking tools and put COC only on it. Yes, and that's for skill gain. Okay, now Zandog brings up an interesting point. He says, it is better to succeed and get the task complete or get the full skill XP, even though the task will take much longer. Um, and so that is a matter of preference. However, I would argue that you should spend time doing those longer actions and getting the skill up because in the long run, Having higher skill will allow you to do those massive projects that you want to do because, you know, like with, with high skill, the action timers go down to really low, like three seconds, two seconds, right? Um, well, you know what we used to do? We used to just have a set of high quality, fast, mm -hmm. uh, we put the WOA enchant on it to make your action timers even go uh, slower or shorter. And uh, then we'd have another set of of tools that were for skilling. Right. So we'd literally have just two sets of tools, depending on what you're wanting to do for, right. for that time. And with those high quality tools, you would never expect to get any skill. You're, you're really only doing using them to like get the job done. But uh, they become those tools like the high quality tools with high WA window pages. Those become way more effective when your skills really high. Right, like I think on my main, the mining actions I had were like 1.7 seconds. And I could queue up 10 mining actions in a row and they were all 1.7 seconds. Like I just like continue mining over and over. My stamina bar would not go down. I could just like mine out a massive area in no time whatsoever. So but here's a question that everyone can answer. What's the best place to be in the world map? Simple enough. The best ah. place to be in the world map. <laughs> it's a good question. All right. There's an yeah, here. Yeah, the best place? Yeah. Is, there, is there a spot on the map that's the best spot? Okay. Right here. <laughs> Zuto, you got to go right here. That's the best place to go. And any place in the world map let me just keep it there so you can maybe take a picture of it in the future so i'll just leave my cursor there just take a picture and uh if you go there that's you you will you will not regret that decision okay so right, who wants to die asked this might be too much but what determines the amount of skill given when you get the when you gain a tick and i think the answer to that question is the number one thing that determines the amount of skill tick skill gain that you get actually there's two two main things one is the length of the timer so the the longer the timer is the more skill gain you get now i'm pretty sure this is proportional meaning that if the skill time if the action timer is double it will give you double the amount of skill so i don't think there's much difference between like just doing the short action timers versus trying to get those long action timers. 
I, I think overall the skill gain per hour is the same. But what the long action timers do is allow you to AFK longer and not worry about whether or not you're missing an action or something like that. You queue up three or four actions, it'll go for a minute or so. You go over and watch your YouTube or your whatever it is. And then you can look back and say, oh, I've, I've been sort of idle for a couple seconds there. I'll queue up for more action. Whereas if you want to like do those like short actions, you kind of have to be on it every single second. Okay. Now the, the, well, other, the other thing oh, that determines sorry. how much skill gain you get is your level. So the higher level you go, the smaller those skill gains are going to get. And that's going to happen uh, right till when those skill gains become 0. 0.000. 000. 008 or whatever it is. So this is a little anticlimactic here, but we finished the house. Yes. Woo yeah. <laughs> nice. I got to I just didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> Sorry. I know I'm on, like I'm we, on a we we didn't put the fence on there, but I'm not counting the fence. We finished the house. It right. looks great. Let's let's make one. I'm going to make one round. There's our first nice. house. It's got the roofs on it. It's got the second it's level really nice. with all of our beds. Finally in the game. We have to wait for the wimp to grow before we can put the rope. Oh, fence here's there. my uh, here's something that I did during the week was uh, plant this whole forest. Not really forest. It's like four tiles wide of trees that are not olive trees. So that that's the benefit. That's right. That's why who wants to die? He's got to drop so much knowledge for the two t two streams he's going to miss. Yeah. <laughs> that we're not even halfway through what he has to say. <laughs> uh, I could talk about this forever. I'm trying to leave out Actually, a lot of the details here. <clears throat> is did there you any more that you wanted to say about this or did you want to talk about so there there's do you want me to bring up the next the next topic? What's the next one? What's the next time? So it's it's combined. So you've okay. already talked about like skill gain and skill ticks, skill chance, all this stuff. Uh, now there, there's this sort of theory going around, not a theory. There's actual like, here's the thing. There was two formulas that were dropped uh, in the last right. few like month or so. Basically saying, if you have an item that you're imping and you input like your skill into this formula. So if you input your skill into this formula and uh, I think that was it, just your skill. Right. Input your skill into this formula and it'll tell you if you imp an item at this level or higher, you will get double the experience. Right. On top of sleep bonus, which would mean you'd get four times the experience if you were imping an item at that level. And they called it the sweet spot. Right. That the problem was there was two separate different formulas that were told to us and both of the formulas couldn't be right. Right. If any of them, like, could you believe this, that you could, you could get an item or many items at a specific level based on your skill and get four times the amount of experience. Four times? Doesn't that sound too double? good? Double do plus sleep bonus. Oh, plus sleep bonus. Yeah. Four, four times. times. Yes. You could do it four times. Well, 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 sleep bonus normally would give you double. So it's still double of what you would get when your sleep bonus is on. So double what you get right. in sleep bonus, but four <laughs> times what you would four times normally what you get, get if you normally get. Right, right. Yeah. That this does that even sound true? That sounds like a myth. Right. And then they, right, they the, the two separate formulas. They can't both be right. The reality is that it is true. It is uh, true. I, I, I was a Why little bit skeptical we... at first, but I okay. found I, I spent a little time and um, OK, this what what's the formula here? OK, so I, I think I'm going to show just, I'm going to show this. Maybe we should, we should just stick with like the formula that I feel like is the right one. OK. Give, give me the formula and then I will okay, type so, it out. So hold it's on. For 77... some reason, I can't. <laughs> for 
some reason. <laughs> Something weird's going on. Okay, hold on. Huh. Interesting. Let me just get rid of this and bring up this. You ready for it? Oh, I it's see what's a, wrong. I see what's wrong. Not a very wrong. hard formula. It's not a very hard formula. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get it ready. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so it's whatever your skill is. So you like multiply X times yeah, X. Multiply that by 0 0.77. 0 0.77. Yep. Oh, is and it plus 23? And then you add 23 to that. Look, yeah. Google the, gives me a graph here. This is awesome. So, yeah, okay. the graph will be a, a linear graph, right? Like a line, straight line, right? Yep, yeah, yeah. So yeah. X represents my skill. Is that what you're saying? Let me X represents zoom out skill. a second here. Okay, so and, you're uh, saying... I'm going to give the credit to Oblivion Reaper. Okay, because so he's if the one I... who shared the formula. If my skill, let's say my skill right now uh, in leatherworking, it's 50. Okay. So here, X is 50. That's my skill. Then if I, you're telling me that if I had a bunch of items that was 61.5 or greater. Quality, yeah. Greater. Quality. I would get double the regular experience in this game. Yes. Now, there's a few conditions. Okay, so this is where... Okay, but but th there's nothing you can tell me that would make me not want to do this. <sighs> I don't okay. like that sigh. Can you turn that into right. like some sort of happy <laughs> dance? <laughs> it's... Okay, so... Okay, just, okay, lay it on me. Why, why wouldn't Ugh. I want to do this? So here, here's the problem that I encountered with this whole sweet spot imping thing. Um, and it's that because the quality of the item is so high that you fail a lot, right? Like if you think back to that, that roll that happens in the background, the higher the quality of the item that you're trying to improve, the higher the difficulty the action becomes. And so the lower your roll ends up being. So now I'm not saying the sweet spot skilling isn't good, but in order to make it work worth your while, you need to have tools that are really high quality. And well, the higher the quality the tools server for that. Right, I know. The higher the quality your tools are, the better that role is going to be. And um so I did a I did a test with my low quality tools because that's what we got on the server. Um, and the test went something like this. I, I got uh, one of my item, my weapon smithing items up into the sweet spot range. Mm -hmm. um, and then I turned on, I used worm assistant to determine the skill gain per hour. And I just did the sweet spot imping. And I noticed that when it was in the sweet spot, my skill ticks were double. Uh, now, the other exception that I didn't mention yet is that you only get that double if your action is less than 15 seconds. And if you've imped anything, you'll know that the first action is 12 seconds. The second action is 17.1 seconds. Um, and so that, that second action right away makes it so that you won't get the double skill gain. So you really can only okay. do this if you imp. You have to imp it and you have to wait for your stamina to go back up. And then you got to imp it again. Oh, yeah, okay, you're fine with that. Sure. Um, and the other thing I did was I made sure that my food bar was full and my water bar was full at the beginning of each of the sessions. And I started imping and I did it for a good 15, 16 minutes straight just to make sure that I noticed that the imp the skill gain per hour was like sort of becoming steady. And it got steady um, at around 0.44 skill gain per hour that's about where this the web like it with this with the sweet spot imping was working out to be which by the way is terribly sad because 0.44 skill gain per hour 
when your skill is only like 15 or so is pretty painful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then so I switched over to great. <laughs> right, not, not not good. I mean, I know that weaponsmithing sucks, but that's just the way it is. <laughs> so then I switched over to like the regular imping, you know, like the the one where you have like five or six, you know, relatively low quality items and you just queue up your imps like you just queue it up. Mm -hmm. uh, and I could do four imps each time before like I would have to like queue up with the fourth action after the first one was done. Um, so my stamina bar went all the way down. My action time was really long. Um, and I just did that for about 15, 16 minutes. And the average skill gain per hour ended up being about 0.8 approximately. Wait, so so the sweet spot that's supposed to give you twice the amount of experience gave you twice half like the half as much gain. of experience half as much gain now it is true that i was getting double the amount of experience the problem was i wasn't getting a skill tick nearly as often as i was when i was imping lower quality tools and that's because my skill isn't high my tools aren't high and i was just failing every action and the amount of skill ticks I was getting was severely low with the sweet spot imping. Now, my guess is that as my skill gets higher, as I obtain higher quality tools, the sweet spot imping might win out in the long run. Um, but that might not happen until you're like at like 80, 80 skill and your tools are all 90s. Um, oh, okay. You all, so you're saying that it is something to keep in mind. You should learn it so, for later in the game. This is yeah. essentially some sort of like min-maxing at the 90 quality, 90 skill level or yeah. higher type thing. Totally. Uh, or having high quality tools to level an alt or something could potentially mm -hmm. work, you're saying. Maybe. Right. Maybe. It's a lot I'll, of work. I'll do I'll do more testing later as our skill goes up, but uh, for now, and I'm going to stick to the regular, okay. regular skill grinding. Well, well, you just took me down a peg there. What about actions that do not require tools? Totally valid question. I think that it's like you're talking about, like, let's say, um, let me think about it. Like, let, let's say you're improving pottery and you use your hand or something like that, or yeah, uh, you still. You but still any action? Run... How about how about harvesting? Harvest? Well, yeah, harvesting without yeah tool. I, I think th th there definitely is something like the the same thing happens in the background. Uh, that roll happens, but I think it's there's something that I, I could be wrong, but I feel like it basically enters in a really low number for that, like a, maybe a one for the tool quality. It makes it so it's harder to do those types of actions. I see. Um, I know that the grinder, you know that grinder app that we were looking at on the last stream? Mm hmm It has an option for like adding in the situation when you don't have like the, the tool quality doesn't apply. So like for example, your or not the tool quality, but your tool skill doesn't apply. Like uh you're improving, but you're improving with a lump, and there's no skill associated with improving with a lump. So I'll be honest, I don't know the exact way that it handles it, but my guess is that it would enter it in as a one quality tool or one skill or something. Possibly even a zero skill. Yeah. So do we have slate or marble? Yeah, Zandog. Only skill you need to build without tools is drinking tall boys. 